Holly. It's Latin for many. Sick. Now suck your blood. Now suck Politics. your blood. Wee. Politics. All oh right. Boy. It's time for the saddest clip I've ever seen. <laughs> you know what? With all the preparation, I didn't even clip this thing. But I'm sure we can what? find it. Yeah, I know. It's, no. it's so it's so ubiquitous. Everyone has seen it. But we, I'll, I'll grab it. Do you want to? Yeah, yeah. Uh, read well, the article. I, sure. Yeah. Well, we got an article. It's coming from uh, this one is from Fox News. Are you doing the, the headline Fox? is okay. George W. Bush makes unfortunate oh, no. Iraq gaffe. Yeah. When condemning Putin's Ukraine invasion, former President George W. Bush made an eye-catching gaffe. It's a weird way to <laughs> eye-catching. Eye okay. Catching. Regarding Iraq, while condemning Russian President Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine, Bush delivered remarks regarding the importance of democracy and threats to democracy in the U.S. and abroad. Long story short, he's reading the scripts. Yeah. Right. F- friend of Michelle Obama and Ellen, uh, sort of rejuvenated uh, PR campaign throughout the pandemic. He is suddenly sort of the darling of the uh, elite circles, and people s- seem to have been a little bit distracted from, you know, war crimes, lies, just basic sort of lizard people uh, behavior. Uh, but we were all sort of shockingly reminded of it during this clip. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm still waiting for it to look. Hey, by the way, just real quick, uh-huh. this yeah. uh, this this feed I'm giving you of the the Streamlabs, uh-huh. I think is slowing down a lot of my operation over you here. Think Are you so? okay, okay if I? Yeah, you can take it away. Okay. It's Are just you my... using it? Or is it helpful? It is helpful, but we'll figure it out later. I can use my normal uh, monitor system. Okay, because I think this and, is. A... Um, it's it's yeah. clogging up the the. No, the we don't want to clog so. up anything. We gotta <laughs> we gotta up your internet connection over there at the yeah, we'll, at the office. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Okay, so here's um here's a version of it. Hopefully, <laughs> let's find out. Let's okay. see. Uh, all right, come on, Twitter. There you go. We got some lag. We got the spinning wheel. It takes this us is two fantastic. hours just on show days to prepare all of the bits and pieces that go into making the show possible. Um, and sometimes things get left behind, folks. We're mm-hmm, sorry. Mm-hmm. Okay, here we go. Come on. Play. Do it. Rigged. Political opponents are imprisoned or otherwise eliminated from participating in the electoral process. The result is an absence of checks and balances in Russia and the decision of one man to launch a wholly unjustified and brutal invasion of Iraq. I mean, of Ukraine. Oops. Iraq, too. Anyway. uh, (laughs) 75. Uh, Okay. Good save. Good save. Good save. Good save. He's 75 years old. Sort of horrifyingly younger than our current president. And this is by the type what of, four yeah, years? By almost five years. Oh wow! Yeah. Um, so this this has really got me torn up a little bit because on one hand, it was funny, I guess, and he he saved it. Uh, he did, but it's a- funny according because- <laughs> to the group that he was there, like yeah. to his audience. Um, you know, he he kind of saved the moment, but that moment of silence when he basically admits that his role in <laughs> in starting our war with Iraq and, of course, Afghanistan's included in there, uh, admitting to war crimes and <laughs> all the horrible things that are being levied against Putin. Uh, the hush that falls across the crowd before he he mentions how old he is uh, is really horrifying because he's he's filled with a room of people who are more or less also complicit 
in what happened in Iraq and Afghanistan during the Bush administration. Um, and to a degree, we were all sort of complicit in it. You know, they, the manufacturing of consent was very effective. There was over 70% of the U.S. population, uh, you know, uh, agreed favor, with going yeah. to war, Yeah, in favor of going to war. Uh, not that that's necessarily our fault. We, the, 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 infra the independent infrastructure uh, that would be the early sort of warning or alarm bells to, you know, identify the manufacturing of consent, i.e. our show and shows like ours, is significantly more robust now than it was uh, in 2003 or so when the, the war started. Uh, but it just really is sort of horrifying that war criminal George W. Bush can admit to crimes and then make a joke and everybody laughs it off and we all move on. Well, I think it's a, a reminder for a certain generation, probably probably our generation, uh, the same sort of thing that the next generation will have with COVID and, you know, uh, a lot of this stuff going on, Ukraine, Russia. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's the, I don't know, in the context of trauma-based mind control, a lot of that trauma post-2001 was you know it's tied in with war and all this stuff and then the realization because there was a huge awakening after that especially in the military you know i haven't met oh. anybody in the military yeah. who was part of the military at that time who who is like yeah we were we were, we were completely lied to we had no idea why we're in afghanistan like we had no idea we we're just fighting because we're, we're told to fight you know and so um there's a big change in that regard and and so to be reminded of that in this moment in time is uh i don't know it's Very, like opening old wounds you know it's like yeah uh, it's a little extremely throwback. relevant it's, yes it's painfully it's relevant painful. right 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 yeah so um yeah so i think it came at a good time <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> it, it, it at least opening up the opportunity for people to take a second and talk about how effective the manufacturing of uh consent was back in the early 2000s many Young people nowadays who are sort of, um, you know, a coming of age, the Gen Zs, uh, didn't go through that. They, they right. have That's no life experience with what happened. Um, and the millennials, of course, who are just coming of age, yeah. just being able to kind of understand the world. Something uh, is wrong. <laughs> yeah. That's what a lot I mean, of that was said. an awakening. Something is not right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. That, that whole thing was an awakening. For arts, so, man. for an entire generation, and that was before the internet was what it is today. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyways, there you, yeah, that I mean, happened. Think, think about all, all that happened. Think about this. All of that happened. The you know Iraq and everything in the two thousands before the iPhone. You know that's kind of mind boggling yeah. now, but like we yeah. didn't have iPhones, and we had like you know blueberries or blackberries or <laughs> whatever those things were called but yeah sure we didn't, we didn't have access to the internet and and all that kind of stuff the way the we same do now, way in the same yeah. level so the, it's just different in terms of how the information was being disseminated to the public so very and, interesting and to see. In, to a degree it wasn't i mean really right. it was uh you know the biggest example was uh like i don't know um zeitgeist you know, yeah, that was kind of man, my first time coming into the conversation of like Some, well, something's off here. Alex Jones was one of the guys ha had been through the whole thing. Was very, you know, calling out the war. That that was sort of his, uh, I don't know, dar sweetheart, darling period where you know he was getting popular. He was speaking against you know what was happening uh, at a more practical level. It was before sort of the revolutionary thing took place and all the craziness with trump and all that so it, it seemed more genuine at the time but you know i right. don't know who knows who knows man but uh you got anything else on this bush thing or are we no, ready to no, move on i to, say we uh, move on uh, our older uh more vibrant president biden <laughs> this is from cnn.com and the headline is biden arrives in south korea with wor worries growing over possible North Korean missile test. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I love this. They love doing this to Biden. Like, oh, but, there's an extremely dangerous situation. You want to go be right next to it, old man? Hey, Corn, corn Pop is a bad dude. You just, you, bad know, dude. You, you, 
<laughs> he's going to be able to handle himself. Uh, yeah. It says here, yeah, you're right, by the way, that they put him, where was it, Poland, right before, during the Ukraine thing, like at the heart of it, of the yeah, crisis. Right. He's like, we're going During Poland. the conversation, during the conversation of, oh, Ukraine is uh, 40 miles from Poland, and some shells are accidentally going over into Poland. Yeah, let's just send the president over there. That'll be fine. <laughs> and now the North Korea is like te testing missiles and putting out fun propaganda videos like, yeah, let's yeah. put joe in south korea just you know right yeah. up against there within range of <laughs> all these weapons we're so scared of soul that's that's what it is they just love putting biden within range well he's got to remain close he's like a beacon you know <laughs> they can't separate him too far or else the it stuff starts beeping and yeah president joe biden arrived here in Seoul, on a mission to reaffirm a key alliance at an uncertain moment in East Asia, punctuated by growing warnings from U.S. intelligence that North Korea may conduct a missile test during the president's visit. Yay. No, <laughs> don't send the old man over there when a missile's going. <laughs> Even as the war in Ukraine has preoccupied Washington and took up the first half of Biden's day before he departed for Asia, provocations from North Korea have intensified and China continues flexing its economic and military might. OK, so just, just throw in China there. Let's just add China uh -huh. to that, because, yeah. uh, yes, are, 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 they, are you suggesting that China is some kind or North Korea is some kind of proxy to China? Is that is that what they're saying? That CNN? must be what they're saying. Biden wants to show his top partners here he can focus both eastward and westward. <laughs> Joe can go east. Joe can go west. I got two eyes. I can look in all directions. <laughs> and that the United States has resources to help uphold democracy and sovereignty around the world. Quote, so much of the future of the world is going to be written here. In the Indo-Pacific in the next several decades, Biden said, reiterating his desire uh -oh. to continue focusing on Asia. Uh, that makes me uncomfortable. Quote, we're standing at an inflection point in history where the decisions we make today will have far reaching impact on the world. We're leaving to our children tomorrow, Biden said. That is, that is how time That's, works, Biden. <laughs> That's with everything, isn't it? <laughs> He's... <laughs> He was speaking at a Samsung plant making semiconductors, critical components for a myriad of products. The Biden administration has worked over the past months to alleviate a shortage of semiconductors that has hurt American manufacturing, including cars and trucks, in part because shipment of some Chinese made components were stalled due to COVID-19. OK, so uh, is there anything else here? Let's uh, let's see. Oh, there's a Putin blame here. Quote, yeah, Putin's brutal. An unprovoked war in Ukraine has further spotlighted the need to secure our critical supply chain so that our economy, our economic and our national security are not dependent on countries that don't share our values, Biden said, calling on the U.S. to step up its own chip production aided by pending legislation in Congress. Earlier, Air Force One touched down at Osan Air Base, an American military installation outside the capital Seoul, after a lengthy journey from Washington. The stakes of Biden's trip have been ratcheted higher by the threat of a nuclear or missile test from North Korea. The prospect looms over Biden's stop in Seoul, where he plans to further tout economic partnership. Okay, yeah, they're just yeah, repeating skip, stuff We now. got down here. U.S. intelligence assesses that North Korea may now be getting ready to fuel an intercontinental ballistic missile, one of the key final stages in preparing for a test launch, according to a U.S. official familiar with the latest information. A possible fueling of a missile would mean that North Korea could conduct a test launch while Biden is in South Korea. Once a missile is fueled, launch usually comes quickly due to the risk of leaving a missile full of thousands of pounds of fuel on a launcher. <laughs> Biden and his... <laughs> wow. You know, I, mean, just I don't the think I ever... Give us is just... I don't know wow. if I ever really thought about it before, but I guess you do need to fuel. No, you don't want that thing sitting there. Yeah, it's a good target. Especially, uh, yeah. Biden and his aides have prepared contingencies. Mm. Should Pyongyang launch a long-range missile or conduct a seventh underground nuclear test? As U.S. officials have warned, American officials have briefed their allies on the various possibilities, and should a test proceed, Biden and his South Korean counterpart have made plans for how they would jointly demonstrate 
a show of resolve. Quote, we know what we will do to respond to them. We have communicated with not just our allies, but also with China. And this could cause the United States really to increase our fortitude in terms of defending our allies and cause adjustments to the way our military is postured in the region. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan Mm. told reporters aboard Air Force One as Biden made his way to Asia. Now, we've explored the uh, idea that North Korea, as it is sort of narrated to us, might not be the whole truth and nothing but the truth, meaning that it's sort of a rogue state that, uh, you know, is allied with China and they're they're wild, we'll never know what they're doing. In fact, there's a lot of evidence to sort of point to the fact that the CIA does indeed know what's going on in North Korea and seems to... Coincidences seem to happen (laughs) that are beneficial to the agenda of the president. Yes. And one of these things, we know that we're just itching for a reason to purchase Taiwan, or I'd say that in a colloquial fashion, others might say protect Taiwan or give them weapons or whatever under threat of China. And what would be more beneficial to the agenda of the American empire and its desire to lock down Taiwan for its semiconductor industry? Taiwan, the little island, supplies 50% of the world's semiconductors, and Biden visits a semiconductor facility in South Korea during a possible missile test and said... If you launch the missile, then we're going to move all of our military into the region. This would be incredibly beneficial for the long-term plan that we identified in regards to Taiwan and uh, Ukraine, where Ukraine... You know, is useful uh, is useful for lots of reasons, both militarily, strategically, um, as uh, up against Russia, but also has a lot of resources that we would just love to get our grubby little hands on. Um, and the same goes for Taiwan, and is similarly positioned right next to China. Excellent sort of strategic position. And we're just begging for a reason to uh, get more involved in Taiwan without provoking China. And the perfect way to do that would be to manufacture a provocation from North Korea, an alleged ally of China. Mm. Uh, and that would that would start it off. Then, you know, he said himself, hey, I want to be here. I want a bigger, you know, uh, presence. I can look to the east and the west. I got two eyes. <laughs> And I think this is going to happen sooner than later. I think yeah, uh, he's. I think you're I right. think we're going to move in any day now. Yeah. Well, very interesting. And it, it, well, you need you need the reasons. I mean, it's just so obvious at this point that the you, know, you got to have the the things happening in the background to allow the president to to do certain things. And so, yeah, set the stage. Let It'd be perfect. President be perfect. Biden go in there and do his thing. The president, Little. man. A USA, missile test, USA. <laughs> a missile test within with the president in range, in range is enough of a provocation to m- mount a full scale involvement in the east, mainly I'm, Taiwan. I'm waiting for when the the UFOs stop the nuke, and then um, you know Biden speaks through, or he's you know becomes a speaker for these aliens. He's like glowing and hovering. <laughs> So I'm waiting a, for. A, a, an interdimensional ambassador. Yeah, just just the Biden's. You know, he's he's, he's he gets lifted to become yeah. uh, some kind of prophet. Sure. Speaking well, the of rest which, of the <laughs> the rest of the article goes on about him sharing his economic plans, which just reinforced the whole theory that I just gave you. Right. Okay. Yeah. So speaking of uh, these individuals being put on a pedestal here. Mm-hmm. You are already sort of a cybernetic smite. Oh. Neural nets are taking you over from regular oh, programming. No. So you are connected. Uh, paywalls. 
paywalls. Yeah. You know, we did forget to mention, yeah, there was ahead. one more story yep. from CNN. Uh, there was a headline, just so we're keeping up with it. Uh, there's there's more to deconstruct and analyze. We'll do that on Monday. But uh, the headline, Senate passes bill to improve access to baby formula for families in need. Biden claiming um, to be taking action. He invoked oh, that. The- taking action in the West. Taking action in the, the arriving in the east. Wait sure, a getting things he done. invokes the uh, Defense Production Act uh, in order to boost baby formula manufacturing, and uh, in a in an operation called Operation Fly Formula, which Fly Formula is sort of yeah. I don't. It's just so Biden is the Lord of the Flies. Lord of the Flies, the fly formula where they are going to be uh, using military transport planes to bring in formula from other countries uh, to try to ease the burden. But Operation Fly Formula, this is sort of a uh, Cronenbergian, like, strange way to put it. But okay. But the Biden administration has never been that good on PR and naming things. I mean, come on, Operation Warp Speed? Oh, that's a winner. Space Operation Force. Fly speed. Formula. I mean, just, he, you know, Trump just leaned into the sci-fi terminology. Oh, Biden, yeah, that's all worked. Biden has to do. He just lean in. It worked. Go, just go. Just go. I mean, Dark Lord. Do, do Biden, like Doctor Strange. Just embrace the dark. Just yeah, everything right. he does starts turning into, uh-huh. you know. Operation Hold Multiverse on. of Madness. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, the Biden administration named it the Disinformation Governance Board. <laughs> well, I guess, like, yeah, yeah, I think they do it to themselves. Bureaucratically mm, sort of d- uh, upsetting name for the Ministry of Truth. Yeah, but Trump would have just called it the Ministry of Truth, and everybody would have been stoked. 